Yes, it was interesting waking up with Yossi and David sleeping together. So, <laughs> I suppose everyone. So, um, right, we're going to talk about perception. I have 10 minutes to tell you about how the brain works, okay? And everyone here is about trying to get people to see differently, okay? So if you're going to try to get people to see differently, you have to understand why we see what we do in the first place. So how many of you, so actually I always have the same aim in every talk, which is I want you to know less at the end than you think you know now, okay? And I always succeed. So um, let's see, and the reason for that is because nothing interesting begins without doubt. Doubt is the engine of creativity. It's not confidence, it's courage and it's doubt. So what do you see? So how many of you woke up this morning thinking that you saw the world as it really is. I wasn't sure myself. So, do you see reality? No one here is seeing reality. What are you seeing if you're not seeing reality? Nothing. What, you're all, what, relativists. So no one's seeing reality. So well, let's do a test then. How many of you can see the predator that's about to jump out at you in this image? It's staring right at you, okay? And if you haven't seen it yet, you're dead, right? Especially here, okay? Can you see it? 90% of the information your brain uses to see comes from grayscale, okay? It's staring right at you. Who thinks you can see it? Take a guess. Okay, let's just add 10% of the information can you see it now? For those who maybe shouldn't be here, there it is. Okay. So now you can go back. Oh. Oh, go forward. There we go. You can see it now. Yes? So this makes a really important point, which is only 10% of the information your brain uses to see comes from your eyes. Okay? Your eyes are almost pointless when it comes to vision. The other 90% comes from other parts of your brain. So, what about lightness? Maybe at the level of seeing lightness, we see the world as it really is. Okay? Even jellyfish see lightness, and they don't even have a brain. So, here we have two... Here we have two... There we go. Two identical... Oh, stay. Oh. S stay. Okay, we have two identical circles, right? Oh, geez. Two identical circles. Yes. Okay? Physically identical in all ways. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply change the context. I'm not going to change those circles at all and see what happens to your perception. Do they still look the same? The one on the right looks darker than the one on the left, yes? And remember, we're just talking about lightness. So at this level, even at this level, it makes a fundamental point which is that context is everything. Your brain does not do absolutes. It evolved to do relationships, okay? If I could freeze your eyes from moving, which is possible to do, because your eyes are constantly doing what are called micro saccades, it's constantly moving. If I could stop your eyes from moving, what happens? Your eyes are open, they're not moving, the whole world disappears. You literally become blind because your brain evolved to see changes in space and time, okay? Context is everything. So, but the fundamental question is, why is context everything? Not just that it is. And this goes back to Berkeley, who says that we have no direct access to our physical world other than through our senses. So imagine this is a projection onto the back of your eye. We have two shapes that are physically the same, right? In all ways, spectral content, shape, everything about them is the same. So as far as your brain is concerned, they are the same. This is the only information your brain gets. And yet, they come from completely different sources in the world. The one on the left comes from an orange object oriented this way, under direct light viewed through a blue medium. The one on the right comes from a yellow object oriented exactly the opposite direction, in shadow viewed through a pink medium completely different sources giving rise to the exact same retinal information, okay? But that's the only information your brain gets. So, if you remember anything, remember this. Information is meaningless, literally. 
There is no inherent value in any piece of big data. Information by itself tells you nothing about what to do, even at the level of your sensors, okay? Because it could literally mean anything, if it would tell us that, okay? So, how does your brain make meaning? What's the other piece of information your brain has access to that enables it to turn meaningless information into something meaningful? Memory. Experience. The physical structure of your brain is a manifestation of the history of your interaction with the physical world. Okay? So, we make meaning by engaging with the physical world. That's how it happens. So, I'll tell you a story about two kittens. So, you have these two kittens, eyes recently open, okay? One's on the ground running around, and connected to this kitten is another kitten suspended in a basket. So, wherever the one on the ground goes, the one in the basket also goes. And for two weeks, they have the exact same visual experience. And you take the one on the ground, you test its vision, it sees perfectly fine. What about the one in the basket? It's had the exact same visual experience as the one on the ground. It's blind. It's never been able to make sense of this meaningless information that its senses are getting. It's never been able to physically interact with the world, so it can't see. And this is because our brain evolved, we also grow brain cells in the lab, and the brain evolved to adapt. That's what it's constantly doing every day. Every second of the day. So it's, you have little brain cells here growing out, forming new connections. And what's remarkable is that the more active your brain is, the more complex your environment, the more complex are your brain cells. So these come from two different rats raised in different environments. The one on the right comes from a rat raised in an enriched environment with lots of toys, lots of social interaction with other rats. And the one on the left comes from a rat from a deprived environment. Very few interactions, very few toys. So your brain comes to match the complexity of its environment. A more complex environment, a more complex brain. A less complex environment, less complex brain. So, can we turn these lights off very quickly? Is that possible? Okay. I want to show you how quickly your brain can what I call redefine normality. Brilliant. First notice that these two desert scenes, all the way down if possible, these two desert scenes are exactly the same, just one flipping the other. I want you to stare, if we can turn these lights off, I want you to stare at the dot between the red and the green squares. We're going to do it for 30 seconds, which is a bit of a killer for a 10-minute talk. So, just stare at that dot. Don't look anywhere else. And while you're staring, I'll tell you what's happening inside your brain. It's learning. It's learning that the left side of its visual field is under green light, and the right side of its visual field is under red light. That's becoming its new reality. Which means everything you see afterward will be a consequence of this experience. You're also getting very sleepy. All right? <laughs> Keep looking, don't look anywhere else. When I tell you to, I want you to look at the dot between the desert scenes. Okay? Not yet. And I'll count you down. Three, two, one, look there. <laughs> Do they look the same? For 7% of the men here, they will, because you're colorblind. Okay? <laughs> All right? So, what do we see if we don't see reality? Well, we can't see the real world because we have no access to it. We don't see information because that's meaningless. So, what does the brain see? It sees a meaning that was useful to see in the past. That's all we ever see. And a meaning that's grounded in our assumptions, our assumptions coming from our history of interaction. So, I want to show you something more in the context of language, which we understand more generally. And what I want you to do is to read what you see, okay? We're going to do it all together. Ready? One, two, three. Very good. One. Ooh. Okay, one, two, three. Very good. One, two, three. Oh, I skipped on. So, what are you reading? The task was read what you see. There are no words there. That literally says, what are reading? Okay, you all failed. 
Why? Because your brain has encoded the statistics of co-occurring letters in the English language and other languages. So you're given that context and you fill it in based on what was useful to see in the past. And none of you, like I said, read What You Dreaming, which is just as likely. Why? Because I had you reading. So you were primed to read it that way. Right? Which means we can create all kinds of amazing illusions. We have two identical tiles here. We change the context, and now they look completely different. Right? We have four gray tiles on the left, seven gray tiles on the right. We change their context, and now you see four blue tiles on the left and seven, oh, seven yellow. Why is that doing that? Seven yellow tiles on the right. Yes? They're all gray. They're all exactly the same. Nothing's changed except in your head. These two tables are the same. Okay? The one on the right is simply, the red table is simply the green table on its side. Okay? They have the same dimensions. Which means when it comes to seeing the world, we are just like this frog. And I don't mean metaphorically, I mean we're literally like this frog. Okay? It's getting information, it's generating behavior that was useful, <laughs> and doing very well. <laughs> I love that. And just like that frog, when things don't go our way, we get a bit annoyed, okay? So, if I could just take two more minutes, if that's possible. So basically, life is pretty simple. It's not easy, it's pretty simple. You only ever make one decision in life, right? At any moment in time. Either your brain decides to go towards something, or it decides to go away from it. And whether you go towards a way is grounded in your assumptions. Your assumptions define not only decisions you make, but who you are. And what's fundamental is that we're completely blind to our assumptions. We don't know why we do what we do. Okay? So, when it comes to trying to understand people's behavior, don't ask them. Right? They'll give you an answer. They'll believe it, but it's not necessarily the right answer. So don't ask, right? Study people in the wild, okay? Study behavior. Don't use questionnaires. We know they don't work. This is why they don't work. What's more, ask a good question, right? Too many times you ask questions for information about who, what, where, and when. That gives you information. Information's meaningless. What you really want to understand is why. Why do we do what we do? Not what we do. Because that enables you to generalize. Okay, so some of you are probably thinking, I'm not a frog, right? I've got free will. So we're just going to finish with a little experiment to see how much free will you have. And I'm going to show you two shapes. These shapes have no names. You've not really seen these shapes before. We have the one on the left, the one on the right. Yes, you've never really seen them. They're abstract shapes. I'm going to give you two sounds, right, that are also meaningless. Kiki, right, has no meaning. And boo-boo also has no meaning. Okay, now you independent, free-thinking people, I want you to tell me which of these shapes is Kiki <laughs> and which of these shapes is boo-boo. Yeah? How many people say this is Kiki and how many say that's boo-boo? Yes, like 99% of the population around the world, right? But you're all making an independent decision, right? Why? You don't know why. This has to do with the assumptions about pain. You don't know that. But your brain has an overrepresentation of sharpness and roundedness because of your pain receptors. If I give you the word hate, hate is on the left, love is on the right. If I give you the word odio, many of you will say it's on the right, unless you're a Spanish speaker, in which you'll say it's on the left because it means hate. Okay? So, what makes the human mind beautiful then, right? The answer might surprise you, it's that we're delusional, right? That's what makes the human mind beautiful. So I'm gonna skip that and I'll just finish with this. I wanna show you the power of imagination. 
Just by simply imagining something differently, you can see it completely opposite. Most of you will see it spinning from left to right, yes? I want you to imagine it going in the opposite direction. Blink your eyes, blur your eyes, and suddenly it'll flip. How many can get it to flip? Yes? By simply imagining it different. These are mutually exclusive perceptions, and we're just talking about motion. So which direction is it actually rotating? How many people say it's going from left to right? How many from right to left? How many say I don't care? <laughs> right? What if I tell you it's not moving at all? There's no motion on the screen. There is literally no motion on the screen. Why? Because you're looking at an animation. An animation is just a sequence of still images. Okay? You're taking a sequence of still images, causing them to move, and then getting them to flip from one direction to the other, depending on how you imagine it. Okay? That's delusional. Right? And that's what makes the human brain beautiful. So, who cares? We make sense. How do we make sense? Through shared experiences, truly shared experiences with people we care about in the physical world. That's how your brain makes sense. And that presents a fundamental challenge to technology to be meaningful. So for me technology to be meaningful, how do you do that? You have to live in the space between. The space between the person and their physical world. Okay? So I'll finish with that. Thank you very much. I hope that was useful.